morning everybody um, my name is Brennan Bernard we're here in Harare the sunshine city of Zimbabwe um, it is the 21st of April 2021 um, I've got a bit of a story to tell you about my life um, about what's happening to me and about the problems that I'm facing and I've been overcome with. I'm born in Zimbabwe in 1973, then Rhodesia. Um, my dad was a railwayman, not highly paid or highly positioned. So I grew up the hard way, you know, like a lot of the Rhodesian kids did. Um, played with wire cars, wooden toys. Obviously there was a couple of matchbox cars and whatever, whatever. But no TV at home. Basically grew up hard, you know. Um, I did most of my schooling in Zimbabwe, except for standard five, six and seven I did in South Africa. My mom and dad divorced in the early 80s. My mom remarried, went down south, started a new family. My dad remarried, started a new family here in Zim. Um, I'm the second child of that first marriage. I was the unwanted pregnancy. During my O-level year, uh, my younger stepsister Jade, she had a terminal disease called Newman Pick. Um, from what I was told at that age, there was only about five kids around the world that had this disease, very rare, no cure for it. Doctors were still studying it and looking for cures and whatever. So she needed a lot of medication, care, up and down to South Africa, she needed bone marrow transplants. Now, as I said, my dad was a railway man on rail meds, medical aid, but it was good, but not all that great. So, there was always finance issues at home. There was not always money to do everything. My dad used to have a VW Beetle, but he used to cycle to work. He used to work Monday to Monday. Um, We, in the year that she died of my O-level, she, she passed away, I think it was about two months before I was due to write, and my dad said to me, hey, listen, bro, you know, no money, you know, can't pay your O-levels, and this year you haven't done well enough due to my sister illnesses and the family pressures, so... It caused an argument between my dad and I. I ended up leaving home. Got involved with a, a cousin who liked drinking. He introduced me to drinking and smoking. And so, yeah, life was hard. First job was at Chickening 9th Avenue when Chickening first opened in Zimbabwe. From there, I went to Steel Force, to the De Palmas, worked in the sales did okay. After that I went to Hopley Stationery, um, well Hopley Supermarket, Mr. Williamson, God rest his soul. Um, brilliant man, had a little supermarket and he wanted to do stationery as well so he gave me the job upstairs in the stationery department. Helped grow that, worked, delivered, you know, repped, dealt with customers, did the stocks. You know, learnt. I learnt a trade, you know. Um, progressed from there, I think it was about a year. Then Marvo Stationers got a hold of me and they heard of me and they offered me a job, Mr. Katz. May his soul rest in peace as well. Um, him and Lorna Everett taught me everything they knew. I started off in the stores, worked my way up, repping, 
Um, I wrecked the whole of Zimbabwe. Private schools, um, clicks, discum, Red Star, Jaggers, all the wholesalers. Did well. Um, Mr. Katz was getting sick, so I decided best move on before, you know, he does die and things go wrong. Went to Machana Land Farmers Co-op. Um, worked in a concession area dealing with farmers. A number of you that see this video may know my face. You may have been one of the farmers that I've dealt with in the past. Um, then the wheels fell off here in Zimbabwe in the early 2000s when the farms got taken, etc., etc. So I was living on a farm dealing with farmers. I was one of the targets. So I ended up leaving Zimbabwe in 2003, not because I wanted to, but because of the whole situation. Went down south, worked at Spa in Randburg, Lemon Grove Quick Spa. Um, floor manager there. Enjoyed the job. I loved all, you know, dealing with all the people. With the xenophobia attacks and all that, um, I decided it was too risky. <laughs> working in a supermarket and for the salary that we got my life was worth more left there and went to do booster towers you know cell phone towers um, got my accreditation with Huawei University South Africa for 2G, 3G, 4G whilst doing that a friend uh, old school friend um, Desmore Noble told me no, South Africa's building up, it's picking up the economy and all booster towers are being upgraded because Zimbabwe is going 4G. He said, Brandon, come back to Zim. Life in South is dangerous, but lots of opportunity here, come back to Zim. So I took his word. Remember, as I said, he was an old high school friend. Um, came back to Zimbabwe Went to Vic Falls where Desmore was living Not to know he wanted a sexual relationship. He was gay And he knew I was straight So when he now brought the subject forward and said hey, I want a relationship with you and whatever whatever I said hey listen chap Sorry, but I'm straight <laughs> I don't do what you do. I respect you for who you are and what you are, but respect me for who and what I am. So he politely then, there was no work which he had promised me a position through a frame that he knew in liquid, liquid comms. There was no such thing. So that's when the wheels started to fall off here for me in South Africa. Um, I in Zimbabwe. I managed to get since then, that was 20, late 2016, since then I managed to get a few odd jobs, short contracts, never anything solid. You know, I'm not a stupid person, I may not have O levels, but a piece of paper doesn't tell your worth mentally, physically. With a car accident I had in my early 20s and formation in the womb defect, I ended up losing some fingers and on my right hand, I'm right handed. And of course, you know, since then, people don't really take me seriously. They look at me as, oh, he's missing fingers, he's got a handicap. I have no handicap that I, I believe. Life for me is normal. I still operate a knife and a fork. I can still write. It's not the neatest, but I can write. I write neater than the doctor. Let's put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> so with the accident, our local x-ray machines, etc, etc, in Bulwayo, couldn't pick up the further damage it was. And a number of doctors that I had seen um, all said, hey, you know, it's a growing defect. You'll grow out of it. It'll come right. It didn't. It got worse, it got worse. The fingers started going purple, black, you know. 
I saw a local doctor. Um, he recognized the problem immediately. He said vascular problem, blood's not circulating properly. He got a hold of a professor in South Africa who said I had to go immediately. I went to South Africa. My employer at the time, Marvo, Mr. Katz, he stood by me. Um, he gave me all the help I needed financially. I never lost my job, never got, went on to half pay. I had a total of nine operations over one and a half years, two years, where eventually I said, hey, come on, take it off. It's enough. Um, so fingers were amputated and basically from then people started to not take me so seriously. Asking and requesting the Dispora people, you know what it's like in Zimbabwe, you know the difficulties we face. I'm asking for help. If you're abroad, help me, help me to be able to set up a small business be at a little restaurant and take away or if there's someone out there that's generous enough and can see that I'm honest and that can help me get a little two-ton truck buying and selling in the rural areas I, I, I take stuff the people in the rural areas are suffering as much as I am here in Harare they need food products they need their soaps they barely not there where what I, what I want to do is I want to now buy bales of clothing, plastic wear, bulk food products, go out there and say to them, look, I know you don't have cash, you don't have US dollars, money is hard in Zimbabwe, but give me ground nuts to the value of these things that you want. I bring that back to Harari, I buy myself a little peanut butter machine come back with that stuff, make my own peanut butter, sell it into the supermarkets or wherever. I have so many ideas. I'm asking you, please, in cash or kind, please can you help me? Um, my contact number is plus two six three double seven five zero five eight three three five. That's Plus two six three double seven five zero five eight three three five. That is my landline WhatsApp eco cash. That line is my life, it's all my contacts. I'm asking you, please help me out. Whoever you are, whatever help you give, I'll always give you a feedback, photos, what I'm, what I'm doing. I'll always run a feedback with you so that you can see that the help you're giving me, I'm using it. I am not a drug addict. I'm not an alcoholic. I can be blood tested at any time, anywhere. I'm asking you, please, I need the help. I was robbed a few months ago in Gweru, stabbed in the head, um, back as well. In the scuffle that ensued in that robbery, my phone got taken, all my money. My glasses were damaged, beyond repair. I need bifocal glasses, but that's between $160 and $200. I can't afford it. There's a young African guy, wonderful guy, Tafadzwa. He's a barman here in town. He said to me, he said, look, he said, Marungu, <laughs> you are my brother, although you're white. He said, you're my brother. I cannot see you struggle like this. So he's letting me sleep in the back of his Opal Cadet in Machu Picchu, Lusaka. He's a white man, they think I'm rich, so they all wondering what is this white man doing here, you know, what does he want? I get insulted daily, you know, it's, it's a disgrace. That fellow Zimbabweans, as hard as Zimbabwe is, black, white, coloured, Indian, we're all struggling. But to walk down the road and be insulted, because I'm white. Now I'm being insulted by people 
who every Sunday go to church. Oh, Jesus, I love you. Amen. Hallelujah. But yet when I walk down the street, I get insulted. Sometimes I even get spat on. In the lower areas of town, Harare Street area, I even get spat on. The, you know, um, it's difficult out here, guys. Please. From my heart, I beg you and I pray to God that you'll, you'll find it in your hearts to help me out. Everybody watching this, I'm basically I'm on the streets, guys. As I've said to you, anybody who helps me, I'll always give you a feedback. Let you know how I am and how things are going. As I've said to you, I need a home, a room. And I'd like to open a little business. So please, I'll ask you for help. Thank you very much.